Section 7.3 is entirely word problems. Each word problem either within the word problem itself or in a header that applies to a handful of word problems has a formula. The problem will describe basically um, how the formula works and we're just going to be asked to plug numbers into the formula to use it to answer some questions. Should be an easy section. Um, so I'll just start with number two. I created a, an equation in function notation, so I use something uh, function notation as opposed to xy notation. And if I read the problem, it says the value, this v in the formula means the value in dollars of a new Ford Raptor. So this is a, the v is the value in dollars of a Raptor, which is a kind of Ford truck. Um, so it says the value V of T in dollars of a new Ford Raptor that is T years old. So this notation, this V of T, the V stands for the value and the parenthetical T that's inside, the T that's inside the parentheses is the age of the truck. When a truck is brand new, it's zero years old and then, you know, obviously just T is just the number of years, or the age of the raptor in years. Sorry, I'm kind of stumbling this morning. It's early. So very simply, this formula on the left-hand side, the V stands for the value of the truck. The T stands for the, the number of years. The equation that's to the, the expression to the right of the equal sign, this is what I'm going to use to figure out the value of, of the raptor. And let me write this bigger just in case it's not big enough. So it says the value of the Raptor after T years is 68,000, and that's supposed to represent the new price of, of a Raptor. I think that's about what they are. And then I have an exponential function with a T in the exponent, and we're just supposed to find the value of the Raptor after six years. That's super easy. All I'm gonna do is change the letter that represents the year, six years, that's the T, to six. And on each side of the equal sign, I'm going to change the T to six. Now I'm going to enter this on my calculator. And because this is money, I'm going to round it two decimals. So simply, I'm just going to break out my calculator, do 68,000 parentheses, 0 0.93 parentheses, up arrow 6, round to two decimals. And my answer, the value of the truck after six years is going to be rounded to two decimals, $43,995.33. It might be nice if I added more to the value of the Raptor. after six years. Is and then write that number. But on a test, if you just gave me the, uh, the amount with a dollar symbol, that would be fine. Your problem one is essentially the same problem, except instead of having a Ford Raptor, we have a Toyota Corolla, have the same kind of formula in it. And you're just going to do exactly the same thing. You're going to understand that this formula, the V stands for a value in this case of a Toyota Corolla in dollars. The T stands for the number of years. This wants you to find the value after four years. Re exactly the same problem, well, structurally the same problem. So hopefully you can push through that. So three and four um, are a little wordier. Let me maybe do three with you and skip four. So if I read, number three, it talks about the number of computers infected by, the, infected by the spread of a virus through an email can be described by the exponential function C of T. I think C stands for computer. T, number of computers. T stands for some sort of time. Um, C of T equals 4 times 1.02 to the T power, where T is the number of minutes since the first infected email was open. And then it says approximate the number of computers that will be infected after six hours, which is 240 minutes. So this formula that's given in problem three, the C stands for the number of computers infected. 
that, that have the virus that's being spread through an email. And the T in the parentheses is the time unit. And this is in minutes as opposed to in hours. So the left-hand side, the number of computers that have the virus after T minutes can be modeled by the formula 4 times 1.02 to the T power. So the left-hand side it kind of tries to describe what the formula is going to give me on the right-hand side. On the right-hand side, there's only one variable. It's the letter T. And since it stands for the number of minutes, if I'm going to answer a question regarding to the number of computers infected, the number I have to put in is the number of minutes, not necessarily the number of hours. So the question I ask in number three, approximate the number of computers that will be infected after six hours. I parenthetically put 240 minutes because very specifically, it tells me t is the number of minutes and not the number of hours. So when I go to get my answer for number three to find out the number of computers infected, I'm going to plug 240, which is the number of minutes. Well, that's, not, that's not even right. Six hours is 360 minutes. Don't be. It's because six. Duh. That's a bad mistake right there, which have been horrible for the video. I'm sure there's been many mistakes. Um, six hours, six times 60 is 360 minutes. So I don't know what I've got going on there. But anyways, now I'm going to do this better. I'm going to find the number of computers infected after 360 minutes, and not 240 minutes. And to do that, I'm just on both sides of the equation, I'm going to change the T to C360. So this says number of computers that have the virus after 360 minutes is 4 times 1.02 to the 360 power. And because you can't have a fractional computer infected, I'm going to round to the nearest whole number. These exponential functions give you approximate answers. They're not necessarily going to be 100% exact. It's just a way to estimate um, how many computers will have that virus. So I'm just entering this on my calculator. I'm going to round. I'm just going to say about, since it wants me to round to the nearest computer. I'll say about 4,990 computers will have the virus. Five, I completely, as a can tell when I read problem five that I had to find this on the internet. I was feeling lazy and not trying to create problems on my own. And um, five, there's no way, I don't really know the units for measuring charges in the battery. But five and, and, and um, six are, are similar in that they give me a formula and it tells me what the formula measures. So in your problem number five, the formula, this C parentheses T equals this ugly decimals, 0 0.003 parentheses, 0 0.7 to the T power. The, the C stands for the charge remaining in a battery, and the T stands for the number of days. So if we're, if we're doing number five, it asks me to find the charge of the battery in 10 days. And very specifically, as I read through the problem, it tells me that the C is going to be the charge remaining in the battery. Measured in, I don't even know really how to say that, columns, I guess. And the T stands for the number of days since it's been charged or the number of days it's been in use. So if I was doing problem five, since I kind of started it, the formula, the charge of the battery in columns after T days is 0 0.0003 times 0 0.7 to the t power. And the question asks me to find the charge after five days. And then it tells me to round to five decimal places. Uh, the reason I'm probably doing that is because this right here is going to give me, if I, if I round it like to one decimal place, it's probably going to be zero. So I'm going to plug in five for the time.
and best I can break it out in my calculator. Hopefully I don't make a mistake pressing buttons. Ah, so my calculator did something that it's programmed to do to give a more accurate answer. So if my answer is going to have a bunch of zeros preceding a decimal place, my calculator will often write an answer in scientific notation. That's what this is. Let me do it on this calculator here and see what it gives me. If I do, I can't even see that. If I do this on this calculator, 0 0.0003 parentheses, 0 0.7 exponent 5 power. This calculator will give me the same thing, except it does it with an E. For what it's worth, this is scientific notation. Um, I imagine you've seen it at some point uh, in your life, but maybe you don't remember it. Um, when I have a number times 10 to some power, that's scientific notation. And to get a number, uh, this out of scientific notation, the exponent tells me what to do. If the exponent is positive, to get something out of scientific notation, you move the decimal to the right whatever the exponent is. If the decimal, if the exponent is negative, you move the decimal to the left to get it out of scientific notation. So to get this out of scientific notation, I need to take the decimal and move it one, two, three, four, five places to the left. And when I do that, anytime I move and I don't pass a number, I have to fill in zeros to the right of the decimal. So the non-scientific notation version of this is 0 0.00050421. Usually, if the first number in a problem in a, in a number is, is after the decimal. We put a zero before the decimal just to make the decimal stand out. So I'll do that. Now I'm going to round to five decimal places. And to round to five decimal places, the number in the fifth decimal place either remains the same or it rounds up by one. Because the number after the fifth decimal place isn't big enough to round up, I'm going to leave the five of five. And I'm just going to say the charge of this battery, the remaining charge, is 0 0.12340 then a 5. That would be fine. It'd be nice maybe if I put this word down that I'm probably going to spell wrong. So that seems reasonable. So 1 through 6, each problem has its own formula. 7, 8, 9, and 10, uh, there's a generic formula that's going to be used for each individual problem, and it's the exponential growth function, and the header for problems 7 through 10 says use the exponential growth function, and it gives me this. It says p of t equals p subscripted 0 times e to the rt power, and the um, P sub zero is going to be the starting number, the starting number of whatever I'm growing at some starting amount. I'll talk about E in a second. The R is going to be how fast the um, item is growing as a decimal. And the T is the time, could be in minutes, could be in hours, could be in days, could be in years. This exponential growth function, um, on the left-hand side, the P is going to stand for uh, some future amount after T units of time. So what this gives me, this P of T, on the left-hand side, the P is going to give me some future amount. And it's generic because it works for lots of different... situation. So I can't specifically say what P is until I get into a specific problem. And then T in the parentheses after T units of time. 
which could be minutes, could be hours, could be days, could be years. So the future amount after t units of time equals the starting amount times e, which is actually a number, to the growth rate as a decimal times the time unit. Real quickly, not that we have that much time on this video, e is just a number. If on my calculator I hunt and peck, I can see an e at the bottom of the calculator. If I hit my red alpha button and the x to the 10x key on the bottom, that's what e is as a, s a symbol. e is just a number, it's 2.71828. e is a number similar to pi in that um, it's a number that stands for a decimal. Uh, I usually explain what e is a little bit better, but we're kind of tight on time. So let me just jump into the problems. So um, problem eight wants me to use this function. And it starts off and it says, a thousand computers have been infected with a virus. That's the starting amount. So the initial number, the zero kind of means the initial. The initial number of computers that have a virus is 1,000. The numbers of number of computers infected with the virus is growing at 3% per day. R is the growth rate as a decimal. So this 3%, I need to make it into a decimal. There's an implied decimal after the three that I don't write, but it's assumed there. To make a percent into a decimal, I need to drag that decimal two to the left. And I'm gonna say the growth rate as a decimal is 0 0.03. Usually if the first number is after the decimal, I put a zero before it. So 1,000 computers, that's the initial starting number of computers that have the virus. The number of computers infected is growing at a rate of 3% per day. That's the R. I need to change it to a decimal. How many computers will be infected after 10 days? T is going to be 10, and it's going to stand for days. So I'm going to use this formula. On the left-hand side, the P of T is going to be P of 10. And in this case, the P stands for the number of computers with the virus. And on the right-hand side, I get the P sub 0, which is the starting number, in this case it's 1,000, times E, which is that 2.7 number, to the RT power, R times T power, where R is 0 0.03, and times T, which is 10. I'm going to shove this into my calculator and round to the nearest computer. So on my calculator, I'm going to do the right-hand side, do 1,000, alpha and e, and then exponent, 0 0.03 times 10. And this gives me the number of computers that have the virus after 10 days is 1,349.858. I'm going to round this 9, which is the the one's position. I'm going to round it up to a 10 because the 8 after the 9 tells me to round it up. Rounding that 9 up to a 10 will cause me to round that 4 up to a 5. And I can say there's going to be about 1,350 computers. With the virus after 10 days. Let's, let's set up on um, number 7 together. So number seven, 100 people are in a room where a rumor is told. That's the starting number. So that's going to be the 100 that goes in my formula. Then it says the number of people that have heard the rumor is growing at a rate of 25% per day. That's the R. The R as a percent is 25%. There's an implied decimal after the five. I need to change that percent into a decimal by dragging the decimal over twice. The decimal version of 25% is 0.25. I'm going to put a zero before the decimal point. And then how many people will heard the rumor after five days? In this case, the T again is just the time in, in days. To get this, I'm going to go P of five on the left-hand side. In this case, P is the number of people that have heard the rumor. Five stands for the number of days equals the starting number of people that have heard the virus heard the rumor, 100, times e to the 0 0.25 times 5. 
The hard part is to figure out how to get the E on your calculator. My calculator has two ways to get E's. Not every calculator will. So most calculators, to get the E, after I type the 100, if I want to get the E, most calculators have an LN key. And above the LN key is usually the, where the E is hidden on almost every calculator. So to activate the E on this calculator, because the E, the e is written in just orangey color, I'm going to go Shift and LN. There's my E. I'm going to go 0.25 times 5. And this gives me 349.03 people have heard the rumor. I'm rounding to the nearest integer. So that nine, that 49 is either going to round up to 50 or it's going to stay 49. Because the number after the 9 isn't 5 or bigger, it's going to stay that. So I'm going to say it's about 349 people will have heard the rumor. I'm going to pause the video and break this into a part two.